I suppose now that we're finally out of the desert, we don't really need to wear this helmet anymore. Let's go ahead and remove that and... Oh God, what the heck happened to my hair? Oh no, 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 this cannot be. Because of this sudden tragedy that's happened to my hair, I figure we'd start off today's episode with a makeover. Now the whole playthrough I've been rocking this kinda shaggy haircut, but I figure it's time to try something different. And just like the school uniforms, it looks like there's actually no new haircuts added in the later cities, like it's literally all the same options that we had from the very beginning of the game. Which means there really isn't anything here calling out to me. Alright, now we're ready! to take on this episode. So welcome back to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Last time we took down our fourth Titan, the Great Tusk of Asado Desert. And today, I'm once again a little conflicted. We've actually taken down more than half of the challenges now, 11 in total, which means there are only eight left and they're all on the top half of the map. Well, actually there's still the ghost or I think psychic gym leader down here, but I think the next one in order of level would actually be this guy right here, who I believe is the normal type gym, and it also happens to be the one closest to us, so that's probably what we're going to be doing next, but as you've probably noticed from the thumbnail, today I'm thinking of doing a special episode focused on the starter evolutions. And that is because my own starter, RuPaul the Quaxwell, is at level 34 now, almost 35, which means that he's going to be evolving very soon. So I figured if we're going to be showing off one starter evolution, we might as well show off all of them. So we're here at the Porto Marina Pokemon Center, and we're going to be starting up a group and showing off the co-op in this game. And if you guys are excited, make sure to hit that like button for this special episode, which by the way, just because we're going to be getting all three starters doesn't mean that I'm going to be replacing RuPaul all of a sudden. Like he's still very much my special little Quaxly. As you'll see in the bottom left corner, there's a link code, so now I just need to put that same code on my other Nintendo Switch, and you'll see that Kern has joined! But that's not all, because we've also got... Citrus? Who the frick is this? Okay, well, that's pretty much everyone that I was expecting. Three trainers, three starter Pokémon, so let's begin our adventure together! Hopefully this doesn't end up lagging too bad. That feel when you have no friends, so you connect your own secondary Nintendo Switch. <laughs> well, technically one of them is my wife's Switch, who's been kind enough to make an egg for me, I believe. So let's try and do a trade. Oh wait, how do we actually trade with uh, one of these characters? Actually, I think you might just have to do it through the menu. So let's go to the Poke Portal. And I believe we go to Link Trade. Oh, that's so cool how it like shows the other characters there on the loading screen. I don't really get this yet, but some Pokemon hop up and like have a little light behind them, which I think means that uh, the Switch you're connecting to doesn't have them in their Pokedex yet. And even though we are literally right next to each other, we still gotta go through this whole trade animation even though it's literally going like two centimeters away, but somehow it comes from like inside of that building and Kern has sent over an egg. Take good care of egg. Now let's do another trade with young Citrus as we're going to be sending away Gimme Ghoul. But I have a couple of those now, so it's okay. There's plenty more out there in Paldea. And as you might have noticed, in exchange, we will be getting a Sprigatito. Or more specifically, Gato Mota? Don't know what that's supposed to mean, but hey! It's registered in the decks as the Grass Cat Pokemon. Its fluffy fur is similar in composition to plants, and this Pokemon frequently washes its face to keep it from drying out. Well, that's all I needed from you guys, so GTF out of my world! But before you do, let's take a nice selfie together. There we go, amazing! Can I get a slightly better angle? No, it doesn't look like it. Okay, well, let me just at least do a nice little pose. Oh, okay, no, not that one. Yeah, there we go. So cool. Gotta hide the thing and bam! Amazing. So we have Egg and we have Gatomota, who actually comes from 
SP-EU? And what is that little symbol? I guess it's just to rastalize? Okay. Well, the fact this Brigatito comes from a different region means we could potentially breed for a shiny if we like set it up with Ditto, which I did actually end up catching the Ditto a couple of episodes ago. Maybe we try that, but not in this episode. I don't got the patience. Well, now we have ourselves a Sprigatito, but we're still missing Fuecoco, which I'm gonna assume is inside of this egg, but in order to hatch it, that means we gotta do a lot of walking. However, there is a way to hatch eggs quicker in this game, or in any Pokemon game, and it is not in fact inside of the Academy, so... Psych! We're not going to school. Not yet, at least. We are instead gonna head back to Los Platos, or more specifically, the Pocopath Lighthouse. The very first lighthouse we visited at the very beginning of the game. Because I want to catch myself a Fletchinder, and I believe we can find some over in this area. Now that we have the glide function and the high jump, we should be able to get over to the plains or plateaus up over here. Or maybe not, because Koraidon is losing height real quick. Okay. Well, that wasn't quite a majestic flight as I was hoping for, but we can't always go for the backwards jump. Oh my god, come on. Oh, what? we didn't even need the backwards jump. We made it to South Province, Area 5. And there's a Gumi up here already. Okay. Well, we definitely don't want the level 10 cat to fight that. I suppose Spinel might be a better matchup, but I'm mainly looking for... Uh, Fletchinger, like I said, because it is a Pokemon that has the ability Flame Body, and that actually makes eggs hatch twice as quickly, I think. But we might as well catch some other Pokemon along the way. Look at that Claw Sire in the background. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. You guys ever noticed how Claw Sire's nostrils look like a second set of eyes? We got Gumi, the soft tissue Pokemon. Most of its body is water and a membrane covers the whole Pokemon to prevent it from shriveling up in dry weather. Always love Gumi, super cute pseudo dragon from Kalos. Been a lot of Kalos in this game. I feel like in the last few episodes, we've seen a lot of Kalos Pokemon. But then again, a few episodes back, we were seeing a lot of Alolan Pokemon. So maybe it just depends on like the area that you're in. I mean, Paldea is pretty close to Kalos, so it does make sense for there to be a lot of Kalosi Pokemon. But we do have a ton of other Pokemon I haven't caught yet, like Zangoose and Seviper, and also a trainer over here, which we might as well take on because, like I said, I want to train up my Quaxwell and get him ready for the next gym, since apparently it's going to be in the mid-level 30s, and I feel like a final starter evolution would probably help against it. While we're at it, we might as well train up the rest of our squad too, or at least the Pokemon that I plan on bringing into that next gym, which Spinel might be one of them. Steel-type at least resist normal, so I feel like it wouldn't be bad to carry her around. As Gatomota is going to hit level 15, just one more, and it'll be evolving. We don't even have Fuecoco yet. Slow down, little Sprigatito. I swear I did see a Fletchinger around here earlier, it's just now, of course, Oh wait, there's literally one right there! Behind Rookie D though! You tried to hide from me, but that only works for so long, buddy! As we finally have a Fletchinder, and wait! You're telling me I already had one of these? Oh! What? When did I catch this? Another Pokemon you could use is Larvesta, who has the same abilities, so you know what? Just to be a little different, we'll get Larvesta on the team instead to help hatch this egg. It doesn't have to be in a specific spot or anything, it just has to be in the party with the egg, and that'll help hatch it sooner, so all we gotta do is walk! Wait, what the frick? Oh my god, that happened so much faster than I thought! Are you kidding me? I thought it was like I stepped too close to a titan or like a team star base, but no! It is in fact our egg hatching into Fuecoco! We got the whole starter squad! As the Fire Croc Pokemon is going to be registered, it lies on warm rocks and uses the heat absorbed by its square-shaped scales to create fire energy. I love Fuecoco, dude. And we do actually get to give it a nickname since I guess I hatched the egg. If I did end up picking Fuecoco as my starter, I don't know why, but the name I always thought for it was just Fred. So I'm going to go for it. Why the heck not? <laughs> Fred the Fuecoco has been added to the decks. And, uh, apparently this Mankey also wants to get friendly. Wait, did Spigatito hit level 16? 
I wasn't really paying attention, so Mankey, get the heck out of here. I need to see if our little grass kitty is going to be evolving. Oh my god, come on. Please, move along. Oh, never mind. That Mankey was very low level, so yeah, definitely not enough XP. But now we have all three starters, so let's check out Fuecoco outside of the Pokeball. Look at him. Oh, you're so small. I wish they would stay this small forever. That's constantly the feeling that I get with my kittens. We recently adopted is like, I wish they would stay this tiny forever, but of course, they gotta grow up eventually. That is the circle of life. I mean, that is life, not the circle, because circle of life would imply that some other animal would eat them. You know what? Maybe I'll get him for you. I don't think you're quite ready for this battle just yet. Oh no! Don't tell me! No, Fred! You were so young! Oh, I totally cursed it. Talking about the circle of life and all that. Oh my gosh. That's so sad. Can we please get 3,000 likes for Fred the Foy Coco? But that's kind of all I had planned in terms of getting the starter. So I guess now we can just do a little bit more exploring. And I just noticed that there's this Pokemon Center over here that we've actually never been to. As well as like the swampy area that I remember from the trailers was where apparently Paldean Wooper was supposed to come from, but we ended up having Paldean Wooper way earlier in like the first route basically. And it looks like there is actually a Terra Pokemon up ahead. Another Gimme Ghoul coin too, as we finally made it to the swamp. And that reminds me that some people were actually telling me in the comments that apparently you can only evolve Relore, the Dung Beetle, by walking it a thousand steps in the swamp. So, we did actually catch one a couple episodes back. If you're looking for one yourself, it is in the Asado Desert. But, where the heck are you even going? Okay. Just make sure to follow along, little buddy. Oh my gosh, that is adorable. <laughs> Look at him rolling up his little dung ball. Or mud. Or whatever. Pokemon says that apparently it's mud and dirt, but like we all know what Relor is really rolling. However, I'm not really sure if I believe the claim that it can only evolve by walking in the mud. I think it works no matter where you walk, because at least for the other Pokemon, oh my gosh, it's uh, Terra Flamingo, holy moly. It actually looks so much bigger too than like any other Terra Pokemon. <gasps> Wait, no freaking way. Oh my God, guys. This can't be happening! <gasps> Our second shiny! Let's freaking go, dude! We got a shiny Gumi too! One of my favorite shiny Pokemon. I mean, just one of my favorite Pokemon in general. Gumi is so freaking cute. And I'm actually kind of scared to even attack it at this point because I don't want to accidentally kill it. Then again, it's not like Mudshot would be super effective. So yeah, it's not going to do nearly as much damage as... Uh, I guess I was expecting, so let's go for a few more of those. Get it down to a good amount of health that we can safely catch it. Dude, I'm so freaking, like, ecstatic right now. I don't know if you guys can tell in my voice, but this is crazy. I've, like, low-key been manifesting that we would find another shiny Pokemon all episode long. Not even this episode, just the whole series. In my mind, I've been thinking, like, when are we going to find another shiny? Lo and behold, we got a shiny Gumi. Okay, that's low enough right there. I don't want to accidentally knock it out with a crit or something. So let's go for the heal ball because it would definitely fit with the colors of Gumi. But unfortunately, it's going to break out. And I don't actually have any more heal balls. So maybe we'll go for nest ball. I mean, it's level 20. That is kind of low. Not sure if it's low enough for a Gumi though. Okay. We do actually already have a Gumi, so maybe the repeat ball will work better? What the heck, man? What is going on? I don't want to risk hitting it anymore either, because I could accidentally kill it. And I also forgot to save the game before encountering it in my excitement, so we cannot fail to catch the shiny Gumi. And we won't, as the Premier Ball will do it. My favorite kind of Pokeball. My favorite kind of Pokemon. Well, at least one of them, as Sprigatito will also hit level 16 off of it, and we have got the Golden Gumi! Let's go, dude! 
Kind of a lame nickname, but I'm gonna just go with Goldie, because it's Gumi, but golden. And like I said, Gato Mota has hit level 16, which means not only did we just get another shiny, but we also get to see our first non Quaxly evolution, and it is gonna be Floragato. It is also known as the Grass Cat Pokemon, and I totally skipped the Dex entry yet again. Whoops. I think also because we encountered that Gumi, that means that Relore's 1,000 steps count probably reset. I mean, I've heard mixed feelings in the comments. Like, some people tell me that you have to walk all 1,000 steps in one go, but I did a little bit of testing with my Bramblin, and okay, well, pfft, it just accidentally went back into the ball, so reset again, I suppose. I'm gonna try to be more careful, but like I was saying, um, I did a little bit of testing with my Bramblin before, and I'm pretty sure I had it go in and out of the ball multiple times, and it still ended up evolving. If you want to be on the safe side, I guess I would just recommend walking very, very slowly for like about five or six minutes or so, with you making sure that the Pokemon doesn't go back in its ball, and then try to level it up or evolve it. Because I think like after you've walked the 1000 steps, it is safe to put it back in the ball. But still, I wouldn't risk it. Just like walk the 1000 steps, making sure it doesn't go back in the ball. And then use a rare candy or I guess take it into a battle. And it should hopefully evolve, which we might as well test with little Verlore here as I'm trying to make my way to this Pokemon Center anyway. Get away from me. Oh my God, no, this Vigoroth is going to ruin the whole thing. Please no. Okay, we're fine. How do I get down from this area without, like, ruining the step counter? Do I have to walk all the way back over there? Probably. Aw, oh, man! I guess I did want to test if it would still count for the 1,000 steps, right? So... Doesn't look like there's any way to get down to this Pokemon Center without ruining my consecutive 1,000 steps anyway, so... Either hopefully we already got them, or I'm gonna have to risk it. So let's hop on Koraidon and down to the Pokemon Center! Oh my gosh, I didn't even jump. <laughs> I wanted to get on top of the roof, but hey, this guy here actually wants us to do another battle challenge. I did see a lot of trainers, but didn't actually challenge any of them. So I suppose I'll go back and do that in a little bit. As first, I'm gonna grab that Sandstorm TM and a Stardust over here. And finally, let's go heal up our Coco, who's been struggling this whole time, just fainted. We can also see if our Lord did in fact get enough steps in, as if we use a rare candy, or actually, he's almost at level 28 already, so I think one EXP candy should do it. <laughs> okay, maybe two. Boom, level 28, and <gasps> would you look at that? Right in front of the beach, Relor is gonna be evolving! So does that prove my theory? That you don't actually need to do all 1,000 steps in one go? Or did I actually get 1,000 steps in without noticing? I guess we'll never know, because there's not like a Poketch that keeps track of exactly how many steps you've done, but... Relore will now become Rabska, the bug and psychic type. The body that supports the ball barely moves. Therefore, it is thought that the true body is actually inside the ball. That is hilarious. Though it kind of gives me more ghost type than psychic type vibes. Like the ball controls the zombie body of this bug. And upon evolving, it will actually be learning Revival Blessing, which I thought was exclusive to Palmy. It's literally the same attack that Palmy gets, revives one of your party members with full HP, but it only has one PP. There it is, Robska. Oh my god, it floats now! Yo, that's so sick! I didn't realize that it actually floated. Oh, I can totally see what they were going for now. All of that dirt and dust and mud that it collected. Enhanced its psychic energy, and now the ball became sentient, carrying around the little bug. You kind of get a better look at the patterns on its back there too. A little bit alien to me, but you can't really see what's inside of the ball. It almost looks like an embryo or something. Ooh, nice of you to turn around for us. Are those your eyes? Does it ever turn around? Kind of confused by this Pokemon, but it is a really, really cool design. Bug and psychic type. I mean, I definitely like it more than or Beetle, I'll tell you that. Oh, turns out there was a ramp leading down here after all. I just didn't look hard enough. 
Okay, well, we're back up, and I do believe I saw a trainer down this path. Ah, yes, there you are. Pretty curious what level these trainers will end up being at, because I feel like we could have came to this area a lot earlier in the playthrough, so I'm not expecting them to be too tough, but you never know. Okay, of course you have a Snom, which is like, not a water type, as I was expecting, and definitely not a good matchup for Gato Mota. Please tell me you've got some kind of Pokemon that are Sprigatito can handle. Oh, it's Dino. Wonderful. The saddest part is they actually are pretty low level, this Dino being at 19, so... Flora Gato could actually handle them if it wasn't for the fact that it was a dragon type and we have nothing super effective, but you know, in the end, we got the experience, but Coco is now on his way to evolving too, so let's just continue exploring. And I'm really wondering how you get over to that area. I suppose you would need the climb on Koraidon. Then what's over there? Oh wait, that's that giant mountain that I was trying to climb a couple episodes ago. Huh. Suddenly things make a lot more sense. Yeah, we're definitely gonna need that climb if we want to get up, but we got a Terra Crystal over here with a fire type Pommy? It doesn't look like the fire symbol. Oh, is it fighting actually? Well, Pommy does evolve into half fighting already, so I suppose that'd be pretty good. We'll be able to make use of the terrestrializing way more effectively. And speaking of fighting, we got a Karate Master over here! Yet another trainer that uh, Floragato probably can't handle. Okay, it's actually just a little manky, so Floragato, or Gato Mota, I should say, gets his first dub of the game. Let's go! Level 11 for Fuecoco. These Pokemon are pretty low level, though, so it might take a while for Fuecoco to evolve if we keep fighting these. I mean, we could go fight, like, way higher level stuff in the area that I was at last episode, but... Like I said, we're going to be focused on exploring today, and there is another area, actually, that I want to check out from earlier in the game. But first, I want to wrap up everything around this beach, and it seems like there's quite a lot of items that we missed, actually. And even a Terrastal Houndstone? What are you doing here, bro? I haven't even seen your pre-evolution yet, and already we've got the Evolve form to Rastalize over here? Okay, stop chasing me, man. Fine. I'll fight you then. <laughs> this thing is so dope though. It's got a whole tombstone on its head, and it's actually going to be a terrestrial ground type by the looks of the whole world on its head right there. Awesome. But it is at level 40, so I'm not quite certain that we'll be able to handle it. I mean, it does keep going for ally switch. Oh, finally you decide to do something else, but it doesn't even affect Mary. <laughs> Okay, maybe we do have a chance after all, because it is a Ghost-type Pokemon after all, so... Maybe it has nothing that can actually hit Mary. Okay, I spoke too soon. Stomping Tantrum is a-coming! But that is not very effective, still gonna do a hell of a lot of damage. But with one more Seed Bomb, I believe it should be Shattering! Oh, that's so dope! Its body underneath is actually hollow. Okay, should I go Premier Ball or just Ultra Ball? I mean... The Premier Ball would look pretty sick. It's an all-white Pokemon, the all-white ball for it. Let's see if it works out. Of course not. This might take a little bit longer. I mean, if you keep going Shadow Sneak, then I do want Mary to actually get experience, so let me just swap out real quick. Wait, didn't the Water Gym Leader say that I could catch Pokemon up to level 40? Or does it have to be under level 40? Because this guy is exactly at 40, so I'm not sure if it counts or not. I would love to catch one, but maybe this doesn't end up- Oh! We got a critical capture! No way! Yes! It stayed in! We've got Houndstone! Let's go! Look at all that experience! Fuecoco even hits level 16, and I think this is Rapska learning extra sensory. Finally, you get a psychic move and a special move, too. Anybody else? Fred learning bite? You know what? I'll teach you that later, buddy. Incinerate, I'll, I'll get you all the moves you need later. Who's learning Seed Bomb too? Is that Floragato? But more importantly, there it is, the Ghost Dog Pokemon. Houndstone spends most of its time sleeping in graveyards. Among all the dog Pokemon, this one is the most loyal. Oh, that is such a good boy. I mean, he's kind of a dead boy, but actually, she's a good girl. 
Well, in that case, I've got the perfect nickname, and that's gonna be Marley from the classic movie. Look, I know what you're thinking. It's been like 20 years since that movie came out, okay? I think at this point, we can make a joke about it. Well, not a joke. I mean, it's just a reference. Like, the dog is literally dead. But Fred is not dead. Fred is actually gonna be evolving, and we get to see the middle form of Fue Coco is going to be Crocolore. Look at this dude. Look at the top of his head. He's got a whole sombrero, which is actually not a sombrero. I believe it is a nest with an egg on top of it. The combination of Crocolore's fire energy and overflowing vitality has caused an egg-shaped fireball to appear on its head. And that little egg will actually hatch into a little fire bird upon hitting its final form. In case you're curious where I'm at, it's this southern right part of the map. And I see some kind of like spiral mountain over here. I'm curious what's at the top of it. So let's try to make the climb. Oh my god, okay, that's a little more daunting than I expected. I'm sure it'd be a lot easier if we had the actual climb ability, but pretty sure we can still make it if we go all the way around. My goodness, this is taking a hot minute. Surely it's going to be worth it, right guys? Looks like we're getting close to the top considering all these little hops. There's larvitars up here? That's kind of cool. Though I wonder how they got up here considering their little legs. <laughs> I don't think they can really jump all that high. But Koraidon definitely can, so we're going to keep on climbing to the top. Oh, we arrived! But we're not quite at the summit yet. Oh, come on, Koraidon. Don't do this to me now, bro. Please. Okay. You're fine. We got a manky and... Seriously? This is what's at the top? I don't want to collect these yet. I don't even want to risk getting the Gimme Ghoul because I might accidentally press A on the... Whatever the heck that glowing sword is. Well, was it worth it? I mean, we do get a pretty sick view of the region, actually. Look at my trainer looking down like, oh my god, imagine if we were to fall. <laughs> no, we're not falling today. But we are going to glide off and see if we can make it all the way down to the Pokemon Center. Oh my gosh, what is happening to the terrain below us? Okay, I should have expected that would happen. Seriously, why did they give us a glide feature if we can't even fly all the way across the region? Maybe that's like Goraidon's final upgrade once you've collected all the other sandwiches. I mean, Herba Mystica is like you get the super glide. That's how it works in Kingdom Hearts, so who knows, that could be how it works in Pokemon too. I could have just flown to the Pokemon Center like from the map and made it here quicker, but whatever. Let's see if we battled enough trainers to get the reward from this dude. So far, you defeated eight trainers, really? On behalf of the league, here's a lovely prize, Eviolite! Yo! That is an awesome item that raises your defense and special defense on any Pokemon that's not fully evolved. And speaking of not being fully evolved, I did want to actually see them in a picnic. Let's try that again, because... I wanted to check out my starters before they go on to their final evolutions. And if you press the plus button, you can actually recall your legendary Pokemon. So we can only see the starters out here. How are you guys getting along? What do you think of your new little cousins, RuPaul? I know they're not exactly, you know, your same type of personality. <laughs> and literally same type either. Like, they're complete opposites. Fire, grass, and water. Lord Agato's already taking a nap. Oh, wait, literally woke up right when I mentioned it. Okay, you guys want to play some uh, football or something? You know, the World Cup is going on. Fred is going for it. Might have a future football superstar on our hands here. Can I please get you all together for a selfie at least? Like, I want the whole squad in here with me, okay? Where are you guys? Oh my god, RuPaul, where are you going, bro? At least he's the water type. He can't really drown or anything, but... Oh man, of course, now they're not all in the frame. Bro, don't go after that ball, the Crocolore. Please just all get in the frame. I wish I could zoom out a bit more because I can't... Okay, I mean, I guess that works. They're not really doing a pose or anything, but I suppose maybe the non-selfie mode might be easier. But where the heck is Fred? My dude, come over here. Get a little closer with the homies. Oh, hey, this might work out. Just a few more steps. Yes, there we go, Fred. I love it. 
Now I did see one more trainer down at the end of this beach and it is actually going to be one of the black text bubble trainers which you guys in the comments have let me know are kind of like the boss trainers of any certain area and they have higher level Pokemon, sometimes just more Pokemon or held items but they're not necessarily like super over leveled compared to the other Pokemon around the area so yeah we can definitely handle this indeed. Our final Pokemon is going to be Azumarill which we don't actually have anything super effective against, but oh my god, I forgot I was on court. Okay, well, Water Pulse is definitely not going to work against Azumarill. Maybe this can be a test for Gatomota. They are actually at the same level, and the play rough doesn't actually do that much damage, so it's time for a Seed Bomb. Ooh, I like how it pulled out the yo-yos. That's sick. I remember the yo-yos from the Pokedex image, but I wasn't sure how it was going to work. Oh, you lowered my attack, you son of a... Okay, actually we do have Magic Leaf, which is special attack, so finish it with a bit of magic. You love it. I love it. Everybody loves a little bit of uh, Weed Kitty. Apparently this is actually one of the 10 sites of Paldea, the secluded beach. And there is a pretty nice little waterfall back there. I mean, it's definitely secluded. Like, this is actually my type of spot when I go to beaches here in Puerto Rico. I definitely like the more not well-known beaches, so it kind of feels like... You're the only person there. And actually, there is a little island over there that I'm pretty sure has to have something on it, right? Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. And we have a rare candy as well as a trainer, actually. Isn't that the school where... What? You talking smack about my school? Is there a woman named Miriam working at your school? Wait, Miriam? Pretty sure that's the nurse, isn't it? Used to work with a model? Oh my... Miriam! It has been a while since we last saw the nurse, or any of our teachers for that matter, but here we've got a TM for Surf, and it looks like one more item! A pearl string! Nice! Now I could go back to school, I know you guys in the comments have been asking me to go take some more classes, but I think I'm gonna save it for the next episode, because like I mentioned earlier, there's one more area I wanna check out from the very beginning of the game that we didn't quite get to explore fully, but I think now we can, and it is actually back near the lighthouse, so we shall teleport here once again, hop on Koraidon, and right down this way. We don't really need to glide, but we might as well do it. Oh, it actually gives you a little bit of extra height. Whoa, okay. I forgot you can press B to cancel your little glide, but we're actually going to be heading back into the Inlet Grotto, where we first encountered that Houndoom that was trying to destroy us. Oh my gosh, there's a little Houndour. That's right, it's time to get our revenge. That Houndour was straight up ready to eat our Quaxley like a roast duck. But then Koraidon, of course, came to the rescue, so I'm on the hunt for that Houndour, and I'm gonna get my revenge. Or rather, RuPaul's gonna get his revenge, actually. I'm gonna send him in to battle it. But there's also quite a lot of other things that you can get here in this cave. Come on, I see a TM for Dragon Dance. Yo, okay, that's dope. Dragon Dance raises attack and speed, one of the best stat raising moves that there is. And actually, wasn't there some items that I wasn't able to get before down here? Yeah, because for some reason, there was like an invisible wall or something. But that still hasn't quite satisfied my thirst for adventure, for thrill. Uh, maybe this item will? which I think we have to hop over to, and it is going to be Phantom Force. Wait, we already had that one, though. Well, I pretty much searched the whole cave and didn't find any Houndoom whatsoever, meaning it's probably too scared to fight us now that we're on equal level. But I did find another exit towards the top of the cave, and it's going to lead back to Area 1 of the province. Looks like we're kind of on top of the lighthouse now. Okay, well, this is going to lead to yet another TM for Pollen Puff. Not going to lie, that was a little bit anticlimactic. So I suppose we'll wrap up this episode by heading back over to the area we were last exploring. Well, actually, we've got two options if we want to get to Medali, either from the east over this way from Zapapico or from the west through Cascarrafa, or I guess from Porto Marina, you have to go all the way around, which seems a lot longer. So I think I'm going to fly to Zapapico. And we'll try to get to Medali from there. I'm sure that regardless of which way you pick, there will be high level trainers for us to fight. In fact, there is already one right here as we head up 
to Glaciado Mountain, we've got another musician! I don't know if I actually want to go up the snow mountain though, so hopefully there's a way around or like where we can- Oh god, you've got a toxicity, seriously? I was hoping you'd have something Waxwell himself could take down, but electric type, I'm not even going to risk. So get the heck on out of there, and we don't even have any more Pokemon, okay. Well, at least RuPaul doesn't quite hit level 36 yet, but he's literally just like right there, just a tiny smidge of XP left. So I want to find a trainer that he can actually beat, so I feel like the evolution is earned. I guess we'll just keep going up this path then, which seems to lead up Glaciado Mountain. Hmm, do we fight a Lycanroc? I feel like a wild Pokemon's not really... Well, it seems that to the right will lead to Medali, which is the next gym I want to take on. Glaciado Mountain, I feel like we got to save for a little later. Honestly, this whole area, I kind of want to save for the next episode, but if we can just find one more trainer to evolve our Quaxly, I'd be very happy. There is a lot of lichen rocks around here, like, I'm kind of scared, dude. Especially the dust form. Sonic the Werewolf Hedgehog version is called. Okay, let's hope that this kid has got something that Quaxwell can handle. It's gonna be Tauros! Oh, the Fire-type version of it, too! Hell yeah! That means that either our Air Slash or a Water move can definitely deal with this. Since he got the Intimidate off, too, might as well go for Water Pulse instead. Even though RuPaul's definitely more of a physical attacker, but once we evolve, I'm sure we'll get a better physical attacking Water move. You know what? I'm gonna make this even more exciting for ya! It's time to terrestrialize Quaxwell one last time! As of course, after this battle, it's no longer gonna be a Quaxwell. It is gonna be a majestic, magnificent, marvelous, marvel? I don't know where I was going with that really, but the point is, you guys are not ready for Quaxley's final evolution. In fact, the whole world ain't ready for the next drag superstar to take the stage. Now the moment of truth, do we get enough XP? Of course we do! RuPaul hits level 36, and that's right. Well, I don't know what you thought you were right about, but I know what I'm right about, and that's the fact that RuPaul is evolving, even though this fog in the background's giving it some kind of weird outline effect that I'm not a big fan of, but whatever, we're gonna have to deal with that, cause it is time to lip sync for your life! I mean, congratulations! Your RuPaul has become Quaquaval! Now sissy, sissy that wall! The Dancer Pokemon is gonna be a water and fighting type. A single kick from Quackaval can send a truck rolling. This Pokemon uses its powerful legs to perform striking dances from far off lands. That's right, Quackaval's design is based on Brazilian Samba dancers. And because of that, its signature move is going to be Aqua Step. Not to be confused with the Two Step, this physical water move does 80 damage but also boosts the user speed stat every time you use it. So we're finally going to get rid of that water pulse. Could also get rid of the Aqua Jet, but, you know, that still gives us priority in case we're not faster to begin with, but I'm sure eventually we'll get a better move regardless. Actually, we have a Terrastalize Sneasel over here, which might just be the perfect Pokemon to test out our sassy, newly evolved duck in battle. Oh god, of course you became a fighting type Sneasel. Why wouldn't you become a fighting type Sneasel? I mean, we still have our Air Slash, but look at that! He's dancing his way to victory! I love that. Look at RuPaul, dude! He just never stops dancing! No matter how hard you hit it, nothing breaks his concentration. I know earlier I joked about the two-step, but like, that's basically what he's doing right now. One step, two. One step, two. <laughs> I know nothing about dancing, I have no idea if that's how the two-step works, but I just can't get over the fact that Quaquaval literally cannot stop dancing. No wonder its legs are so strong looking. Yeah, I know some people are bothered by its design, especially around the glute area, but... And it's a big butt. You know what, Sneasel? I feel bad for you. 
I shall pity you tonight and hit you with a dust ball, which is most certainly gonna catch it. So we've got our first final starter evolution. The other two might take quite a bit to train up, and I would rather use the experience that the other trainers will give us on the Pokemon I'm actually gonna use on my final party. So maybe in a future episode, I'll just give them rare candies once we've got enough to get them all the way up to level 36, which means that is gonna do it for this episode. As always, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed, and I will leave you with a very, very special outro.